So, the chair that we've been working on, loosely based on a captain's chair. So this was pretty much decimated. It's cracked here, it's cracked there. All of these limbs were loose, all of these spars. So we glued these areas back together first and clamped them, left them overnight. We then done the next stage, and that's uh, gluing these back into position and these spars here. We also used some nails from the nail gun in addition to the adhesive, which is what it was put together to begin with in the, in the first place. So, next phase is to get these wee clamps off and see how it will fit back to the base itself. Um, Put over here. Originally it was pretty much just nailed together with uh, a nail gun, nothing else but dry fit, no adhesive. Um, well, maybe a little, not a great deal. Um, so we'll try fit it first and see how it fits back together. So that's pretty much the dry fit, which tells us it will go back together. So we're going to obviously glue all these, wrestle it back in, then clamp it for the next phase. Um, show you a bit more about the chair. Reclaimed. It's basically saying you've reclaimed timber and made it into something that's useful from sustainable sources that made it look like a fancy chair but actually it's been put together quite poorly um, not really any adhesive no real screws no method of woodwork jointing as such um, just just bang together quickly and cheaply with a range of different woods from different sources and probably believe it or not so for three, four hundred pounds, because it looked the part and it had these wee badges on it. And people like this kind of style of having a, a captain's chair. Um, you know, to sit in the desk, do a bit of work, go home, whatever. But uh, there's a lot better captain's chairs than this. I'm just going to use polyvinyl acetate. Uh, which is a wood glue. If you've got clean surfaces um, and the joints fit pretty well, then there's nothing much better available from national chains of coffee houses. Plenty of different ones to choose from. Not ideal for messing about like this. Porous surfaces like this, one good coat on one surface will do. Non porous surfaces, coat on each, and let them get dry or nearly dry before you put them together. It's going to be a couple of holes and dings around these areas. There's some of the woods broken when they were separated but we'll just use a filler to fill them and if we need a bit of colour on it then we can apply a bit of lacquer or stain to hide those very small repairs. Having gone through the, the dry fit stage it tells you how the chair likes to be manipulated to be put back together so when you actually have applied the adhesive you already know how you're going to push it back together it's quite quick and you can see it's come back together fine and then need to clamp it for these what we're going to use is this 
this kind of medium weight clamp which will be adequate for what we're looking to do. I'm just going to put a couple on the back here. base at the bottom. So what we're looking for is for the glue to start squirting out of these edges because that means you've filled it enough for it to fill a joint. If we need to we can protect it with the additional Again, the glue is trying to start to spruce out. So, cloth, water, just use a cloth, it will just smear, put water on it, and actually take the glue off. Do it while it's wet. If you wait till it's hard, you'll have to scrape it, and you'll probably end up scratching the wood if you're not really careful. Dry's clear anyway. Um, okay, so now we need to get ones on this angle here. Okay, so our chair is back in one piece. Um, it's pretty strong. Um, this was one of these ones where I was sent a picture of a, a break here on the chair, and it turns out there was one, two, three, four, five, six breaks, and all the spines were loose. So I had to take pretty much the full chair apart and put it back together. We did through it a series of clamping, gluing, and some. We used a. Uh, a nail gun as well. So before I put the base back on the chair, it needs a wee clean up. So I'm gonna clean up using a solvent based stain. So again, before you apply these things, do a little test area, see if you think it's compatible. Um, and that the colour is a is a decent match. See, there's several chipped areas all over the chair. No, we're not restoring the full surface, stripping down the full chair and re recolouring it. It's not worth it. It's not financially viable. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using the stain to blend these areas in. So they're not as noticeable, they don't stand straight out in your face. Yeah, well, this stuff won't come off your hands, also wear gloves. And it's solvent based, so it needs to be in a relatively large ventilated area using it. Obviously if you're putting a lot on or working with it over a, a longer period, you really need to be wearing um, some kind of mask. But this is just a quick wee job, plenty of air in here when it's uh... When you're applying stains, there's basically three different measures, methods, there's brush, rag, spray, um, Brush, you'll always get brush strokes, however good you are. So this method generally gives a better finish. It's more equal and you can feel the wood through the rag. So you can sense how it's covered. 